There are lots of comic books that I am not interested in. But boy, when you add a really nice steep discount, all of a sudden, I'm interested. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video for you, and uh, this was an order I placed with Gmart Comics. Uh, I had, you know, with a lot of my orders, uh, again, I what I end up doing is I find one book that I'm hunting for online, and then I kind of build an order around it to justify it. For whatever reason, I don't like just buying one book from one place and paying for the shipping. It's just not something I want to do uh, I, because I feel like an hour later I'm going to find another book from the same place. I'm going to buy that and now I've paid twice uh, as much for shipping. So sometimes I'll find the book. Depending on how anxious I am about acquiring it, um, I will put an order together very quickly. And then other times I'll just add it to my cart. So I'll make sure that I'm authenticated into the site. I'll add the book to the cart. And then browse throughout the day, maybe come back a day or two later. Uh, the items are saved in my cart, which is great. And then I just keep adding to it. A lot of times, uh, those original books that I wanted maybe will sell out and they're not available. And I just kind of empty the cart and move on. And then in other cases, they're still there. And I'm like, okay, it was kind of meant to be that I found these and still books that I want. I'm just kind of gathering kind of this, this, this order over time. Uh, so with Gmart, I found one book that I really, really wanted. Uh, for some reason, I'm drawn to the cover. Uh, I just want to own it as part of the series. I don't know if there's a lot of spec value in it, but just really, really uh, like the cover. Uh, so I wanted to grab it. It's an incentive. And while I was there, I saw that they had an incentive sale. Now, I think this is an ongoing sale, and it's it's a lot of incentives that haven't sold well. They're just kind of sitting around. And I noticed when I was kind of doing my research on this order that the books are available in lots of different places. So unfortunately, the desirability of these incentives have dropped. And I've talked about, you know, whether these 1 in 10s, 25s, 50s, and 100s are worth it uh, in terms of speculation, investment, and all of that. Because when a book really, really hits the incentive multiplier is crazy and it, it, it gets out of reach and out of hand really fast. But with the market being saturated with these incentives, most of the time they're worthless. And, and well, not worthless, but a one in 25 being worth 10 bucks. And, and when I say worth, you know, it's, it's only worth what somebody's going to pay. And could you go on eBay and really get $10 for it? Could you get eight? God, it feels just feels weird, feels odd to have a 1 in 25 uh, just not be worth as much as you think, at least be worth half ratio or close to full ratio. So it's painful. Uh, and I was pre-ordering a lot of these. Anytime I got access to an incentive, I would pre-order it and ended up losing quite a bit of money. On the other hand, I did have a few that popped. And, and I think at the end, at best, you're breaking even if you kind of blanket your orders with a lot of uh, incentive purchases but I think in the long run if you're just kind of like picking around or you know making your best guess you end up losing money uh, and what I found on Gmart is they have these great uh, ongoing sales for incentives and variants and so on uh, but they're just books that have just been sitting around uh, maybe they're titles that aren't as popular anymore or they just never really kind of took off in the market. It was a bad story, who knows. However, um, when you start looking at really, really steep discounts, 60%, 80%, all of a sudden the books are more interesting to me. So in this order, we're going to unbox uh, a few back issues, a handful of incentives that I got on sale, and then that one book I was searching for and kind of hunting for that I built this order around. So let's unbox this and take a look. Okay, here we go. This is the uh, shipment from Gmart, sent from Chicago, Illinois, uh, in this nice uh, cardboard box. Let's get it open. Ooh. 
whoops, spilled those packing peanuts everywhere. I'll get those later. Okay. So here we are. Here are the books. Um, let's see, they are t together. Some tape on here. Let's slide it on. Okay. So it just kind of came in that plastic bag. Packing peanuts. And I order the um, Silver Age uh, bag and boards uh, because I want to make sure that as the books slide around, it has some, some padding and room around the edges here. Uh, so it's like 20 cents a book. So I wouldn't recommend ordering these books raw and having them slide around in the packing peanuts. Uh, I would definitely recommend getting the bag and board service through Gmart. Uh, like I said, I like the Silver Age because it adds the additional layer. Like Midtown, they use the cheap bags and boards where the board is like just about like an eighth of an inch too small. So the comet kind of hangs over and gets damaged in transit. So with Gmart, you're just kind of relying on everything kind of doing what it needs to do in order to preserve the comic in the correct and proper way. This is King Conan number three. This is Jay and Coletto variant. Uh, there was some controversy over the uh, character here um, where it, uh, she was kind of illustrated uh, in a particular way and uh, it was deemed offensive. So there was some attention given to this book. Um, and again, I'm looking for value and uh, I was able to pick up this book, I believe. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the, the numbers in a bit here. Uh, but uh, it was just a book that kind of fell off my radar, and I saw G Mart had a copy, and I wanted to grab it. I have uh, a couple of the cover A's, but didn't have the uh, the variant there. Uh, Hulk number one, the design variant. So the Ryan Otley cover. Uh, Otley's doing the art on this fantastic run of Hulk. Um, from the art perspective, from the writing perspective, uh, uh, with Donny Cates, we can debate whether or not it's a, it's a great run, uh, but uh, Otley's tremendous, so um, he's doing, he did this variant here, this is the design variant for Hulk number one. I think this is a one in ten. Another design variant, Captain Carter number one, I have several of these. Uh, I told myself not to get too invested in Captain Carter, and then, of course, after I didn't, pre-order a lot of her books. I changed my mind <laughs> and then wanted to get uh, as many as I could. So I have several of these design variants as well. Love this cover. All right, now this one, uh, this is an interesting book to me for many reasons. I'm not the biggest uh, J. Scott Campbell uh, fan in the world, but certainly am a fan and appreciate it. And I get the criticism of maybe all the characters kind of looking the same, but he's a tremendous artist, uh, kind of came out of the 90s and is still doing great work. Um, this is a cover that I got a long time ago, uh, or this book I should say I got a long time ago, Black Cat Number 1. Probably mass produced, very easy to find, but I love this cover. One of my favorite Black Cat covers, if you can kind of look at it, it says jewelry in reverse, So, and she's kind of um, scratching the glass here. But... Is it one of Campbell's best covers of all time? I don't know. I, I I really like it. And I like it so much that I got five copies. Two, three, four, and five. So sometimes, again, um, books become more interesting when the price point changes. These were 99 cents. So the, the thought here is uh, these are not valuable necessarily. Um, however, it has a lot of things going for it. It's a Marvel number one. It is from 2019, uh, just pre-pandemic. Uh, J. Scott Campbell, Black Cat. And my thinking is, okay, maybe the raw FMV is low. But what I'm betting is if many of these are 9 eighths, that a uh, slabbed 9.8 would be desirable. And somebody might pay 60, 70 bucks for a 9.8 of one of these. So I, I think about that sometimes. I think if there's a lot going on with a book, um, and you think about the artists where people just kind of gravitate toward the art and it doesn't really matter what book they're on. So Campbell, Adam Hughes, Jenny Frizen, 
uh, Jen Bartel, artists like that, <clears throat> uh, there are collectors out there that are just collecting by artist or by creator, by writer. Um, so I will sometimes pick up extra copies of books that are cheap if it features a particular artist. Um, and love that black cat <laughs> cover. Um, so I couldn't pass it up at 99 cents. All right, uh, one of the artists I just mentioned, uh, Jen Bartel, again, has a really, really strong fan base and following. This is Mother of Madness number one, and this is the Bartel 1 in 50 version variant. And this is one of the books that I got at a super steep discount. Now, it doesn't mean that these books were way under fair market value. It just means that I got them at a really, really nice discount. So it makes more sense at that price point for me to acquire this kind of book. Now, um, I'm already seeing a ding on the book there. So is this a 9.8 copy? No, but again, the thought was if I could get it in a 9.8 and slab it, then, you know, would somebody pay $100 for this sort of incentive as a 9.8 uh, because it's Bartel? Possibly. Um, but now with the damage there on the book, I don't think that's the case, but at least, you know, when I was placing the order, that's what I was thinking. So this next run are, or the next few books are part of that incentive sale from Gmart. Uh, this is Vampirella number two, again, another J. Scott Campbell. Um, there is a, a virgin copy of this. This is the sneak peek uh, standard version, but again, just for J. Scott Campbell fans, I was thinking, why not? Batman 98, uh, this is the 1 in 25 Jorge Jimenez incentive. Uh, this book has crashed. It's come, all of these like Jimenez design incentives have, have really come crashing back down. Um, the fair market value of this is somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks. A lot of these books too that I'm showing you, they're available, uh, I think still at Gmart and at Midtown and other places. So the, the, these are not rare by any stretch, but it's really just a matter of finding the right price. Um, I love Jimenez. Jimenez is fantastic. Uh, Batman fans and readers and collectors have been so fortunate to have Jimenez on, uh, whether he was doing covers, interiors, or just covers, the, these design uh, variants too. Um, and there's some collectability here where his run of design variants, they all had a particular color scheme. And I think they ran from, oh, somewhere around issue mid-90s um, through 100, I believe. Uh, and you had Batman, designer. Um, Batman was on issue 100. Uh, Catwoman, Harley, like you had, and, and kind of a cool theme if you were able to get all of these and slab them. So again, looking for... Uh, just some ways to collect books or think about how collectors are collecting books beyond just, you know, sort of a sequential or first appearance or normal typical way that collectors would, would uh, want to acquire books. Uh, Berserker number four, the Merca and Dolfo, this is the Virgin variant. Uh, I think it's a one in 50 incentive. Um, did not pay the one in 50 incentive price. Um, again, I'm worried about these being damaged for some reason, and maybe that's why they're cheap. Um, so I'll have to grade them out and see, but, uh, Berserker is just one of those series I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about. I feel like because Keanu's involved, eventually it's going to turn into a show or a movie or some, some sort of, uh, other media, but, uh, it's not, there's just so many, it's just mass produced. So, um, but I do try and grab some of the incentives like that when they get, uh, really discounted because the online stores, they want to move their stock out. And uh, I, I don't mind taking it off their hands once it uh, gets below a certain price. Okay, so this is the book that I was tracking, that I was hunting down, and I found on Gmart. Uh, obviously, the price has come down since I bought it because that's also a recurring theme. When I buy it, the fair market value is up, and then in transit, it starts to crash. And then uh, by the time I get it at this point and open it up, uh, it's, I overpaid, <laughs> but at the time it looked like a good deal. Nevertheless, I love the book and it is Captain Carter number one. It is the sort of the what if Marvel Studios variant is kind of what they're calling it. Uh, I love this because it gives you that nostalgic retro feel blended with 
the what if animation style and whether or not you liked or enjoyed the what if show on Disney Plus um, my feedback on that is the art style for the animation was incredible I thought it was so well done so when I saw that uh, applied to this variant I'm like I I have to find this book uh, it sold out it got hot uh, it was on some top 10 lists and so forth and then Gmart just had a copy uh, sitting there so I grabbed it so uh, if this grades out to a 9.8 would I send it in for grading and slab it and put it on the wall yeah it, it was one of those wall worthy type books for me and I wanted to get it so I'm happy to have it I hope it grades out and uh, those are the comics I got from Gmart so let's take a look at the order analysis and see what I paid and kind of see where these books uh, line up in terms of value. Okay, here is the order placed with Gmart uh, in March of 2022, March 12th. Uh, it's a total of $123.99 for this order. And uh, it was uh, that... The bag and board service, $2.60. Uh, it was free shipping and no tax. So I distributed just that $2.60 across the total cost of each book to arrive at, again, that $123.99. And then comparing that to the raw value, uh, it looks like I added an additional $41.78 to my personal collection, so not too bad. Uh, this was really driven by that Bartel cover, which, again, I showed that it's not a 9.8, unfortunately, but still from a raw book perspective, uh, if I were to flip this, it looks like I should be able to get uh, $30 for it when it only cost me $12.19. So looking at the total cost of these books uh, for that incentive sale, it, it, it does appear like uh, some of them, some of the books I got at a good deal. Uh, the Berserker number four has a fair market value of almost $29. I paid about 12 bucks. Batman 98, I paid 12 bucks, but it has fair market value about 11. So again, that's kind of where you have to be a little bit uh, probably better than I did in terms of trying to find specific books that are holding some fair market value and still getting them a steep discount. I just, as a Jimenez art lover uh, and Catwoman collector, I was just just needed to have that one. <laughs> and I figured, hey, in worst case, I'm paying FMV for it, so not too bad. The Vampirella book uh, was listed as an incentive. I don't know if it's a 1 in 5 or 1 in 10, but $13.50 fair market value. I paid 6 bucks for that. Uh, again, The Mother of Madness paying 12 for a $32 book. Uh, here are those 99 cent books that averaged about a dollar 19 each. They're only worth three bucks, but I thought it was a really nice pickup uh, uh, with uh, Black Cat and Campbell. Uh, the Captain Carter design variant lost three bucks on that one. That one, the, the Captain Carter books have started to come back down. I think as people understand that there are quite a few of those ordered. Um, Hulk total cost of that incentive was two dollars and sixty nine cents. Uh, fair market value on that. Fair market value on that is five dollars and sixty one. Total cost on King, Can King Conan 3, for a little over $4 for a $6 book. This one I hold off. I held off talking about for last. Uh, I bought the Captain Carter 1 in 50 for $60. Uh, I just had trouble locating it at the time. And uh, it's come down to about $48. But for a 1 in 50, it's holding its value. You know, obviously $2 under ratio. But to me, that's a good sign that in the long run, it should be able to hold value if Captain Carter becomes more of a prominent character. I could see that book doubling potentially over time. But for now, if it's holding at ratio, I'm happy with that. Like I said, if it grades out at a 9.8, I want to send it in for grading because I, I, I love the uniqueness of the cover. It's just the animation style and how it's... I'm, I'm, I'm in love with the MCU and Disney+, Plus, so... It just kind of makes sense for me to have that book. Uh, so some of these books uh, do have some CGC values. So if we plug in uh, 9.4 here, we'll see that, well, actually not many of them uh, have a value at 9.4. How about 9.8? They are recently released, so maybe uh, 
only nine eighths are showing. So there is some value here. And here's that black cat that I was talking about. So in a nine eight, it's $49. Uh, so if you look at like after CG fee, CGC fees and, and, and taxes and shipping and all of that other stuff, uh, you know, you could make $15 to $16 on each of those, multiply that by five. Maybe you've made yourself 90 bucks if you wanted to uh, swap those out and flip them. Are they all nine eights? You know, obviously I have to grade them. But that was, again, kind of the thinking is that, you know, $49 price point for a nine eight. If somebody's willing to buy that, I got the book for 99 cents. So not too bad. Uh, the other books, uh, again, it's probably too early to really look at CGC values. But even that Berserker 4 is $60 in a nine eight. Uh, it's uh, almost a $16 uh, value add there. That Batman 98, just too plentiful right now. You can get it in a 9.8 for 40 bucks. So be careful on Midtown. I think they have it up there for like $25, $30. If you really, really must have it, you could just get a slab, already slab 9.8 for that one in four, uh, 40 bucks. Uh, the Campbell Vampirella, uh, don't believe that one has any value right now. I don't know why it's showing up six dollars, but um, Mother of Madness twelve nineteen same thing. Just there, there's no nine eight values on that one, um, and nothing on the the twenty twenty two books quite yet. So I'm gonna clear these grades and just go back to fair market value. So yeah, again, like a forty two dollar ad here. Uh, so not too bad, but. Uh, it's one of those things where I really didn't have an intention of buying Mother of Madness, Vampirella, Berserker, uh, Batman incentives that, that aren't really holding value. But when the price drops, obviously then, you know, my interest starts to peak. And that's really kind of what all of my analysis does is it, it tries to find and hone in on books and values where the, the price along with the trend, market value, uh, speculation. It's just par all part of the larger algorithm where some of these books, as they, they fall down and they're just sitting in somebody's warehouse, it starts to make sense at a price point of like $12 for a 1 in 50, $12 for a 1 in 25, $6 for a 1 in 10. Uh, that that Hulk uh, number one design by Otley, um, that was less than $3. So sometimes you just kind of take advantage of the fact that these online stores load up on certain books uh, and then the incentives and other ratio variants just kind of sit around because it's more. it makes more financial sense for those stores to move stock so that they can clear out space. They do not want to... Uh, I've talked about this before. It's, it's the cost of storage. Even you as a personal collector, a private collector, what is the cost of your storage? Bags and boards, bins, just square footage in your own house, or do you have to buy a storage locker? There's a lot involved with comic books being a, a physical collectible that you have to think about. And these online stores have to deal with that. There is a price and a cost and a value of storage for them uh, where a lot of times if they can unload a 1 in 50 for 12 bucks, uh, maybe they're taking a little bit of a loss there, but not to them because they're clearing inventory out and it makes sense. So I'm happy to acquire those books and take a few of them off their hands once that price point kind of gets into an area that I'm comfortable with. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting. See you next time.